Hi everyone, welcome back to Gentlesend. Today we are here with a new video where we are going to discuss chemical properties of enamel. We are going to cover this in four parts. First, what is the chemical composition of enamel? Second, what is the organic component of enamel? Third, what is the inorganic component of enamel? Very, very important. And the fourth one, we are going to compare composition of enamel with other hard tissues. Let's quickly begin. Before we start, I want you to subscribe to Gentlesend if you have not done that till now. Also hit on the bell icon so that you remain notified about new new videos. First, chemical composition of enamel. It can be described in two ways. First, by weight. Organic component and water constitutes only 4% of enamel, so less. So the major one is inorganic or the mineral component which is 96% of enamel. So that is your first important viva question. We can also describe it by volume according to which organic is 2%, inorganic is 92% and water is 6%. Now we come to the organic component which is mainly proteins. These are known as enamel proteins because they are unique to enamel and some lipids. Let's first see the enamel proteins. They are of two types, amelogenins and non-amelogenins. What is the difference? Amelogenins make 90% of enamel proteins, non-amelogenins only 10%. Amelogenins are hydrophobic low molecular weight proteins whereas non-amelogenins are high molecular weight proteins. Amelogenins have amino acids, proline, histidine, glutamine, leucine whereas non-amelogenins have glycine as partic acid and serine. Now the important names of non-amelogenins are ameloblastin, enamelin, amelotin and tuflin. We have already covered the details of enamel proteins in other video for which you can tap on the i button above. Now let's look at the lipids. Now lipids are meager than proteins that means they are less than proteins. Where are they coming from? They are coming from the membranous remnants of the Tom's process of the ameloblast cell. Ameloblast cell which forms enamel, its Tom's process have remnants when it is pinched off. Its membrane may remain behind from which we can get the lipids. It happens during amelogenesis that is during the enamel formation. Now we come to the third and the important component that is inorganic component which is mainly calcium hydroxyapatite crystals that is calcium hydroxyl and phosphate ions are arranged in crystals. Important viva question what is the chemical formula of this hydroxyapatite crystal? So calcium 5 ions, phosphate 3 ions and one hydroxyl ion. This can also be written in another way when we multiply it by 2. So what will happen? We will have 10 calcium ions, 6 phosphate ions and 2 hydroxyl ions. And that is very very important. Why a question that what is the chemical formula of calcium hydroxyapatite and you have to learn this. Now this can also be written in another way where we can write calcium phosphate separately and calcium hydroxide separately. So how these ions are arranged in the crystal? If we cut the crystal in a cross section and we look at the arrangement of the ions, we will see how 1 hydroxyl, 3 phosphate and 5 calcium ions are arranged. So let's see, 1 hydroxyl ion is present in the center, 3 phosphate ions surrounding it forms 1 triangle, 3 calcium ions surrounding it forms another triangle and 2 remaining calcium ions forms the periphery. 2? I said 2 but I have drawn 6 calcium ions on the periphery. How is that possible? That is possible because each calcium ion on the periphery is shared by three crystals. So that means each calcium ion on the periphery is actually 1 by 3 calcium ion. So 6 such 1 by 3 calcium ion actually give rise to complete 2 calcium ions. So 2 calcium ions on the periphery, 3 calcium ions in the triangle, total 5 calcium ions, 3 phosphate ions in the triangle and one hydroxyl ion in the center. So we can say the central core or the C-axis of hydroxyl ion around which calcium and phosphate forms triangles. Now what is the shape of this crystal? If we look at the cross section we have seen it is hexagonal in cross section. Very very important viva question but when they are newly formed they are ribbon shaped. So if I ask you which ion is present in the center it is hydroxyl ion which is present in the periphery it is calcium ion and each this calcium ion is shared by three crystals. Now we come to the dimensions of this crystal. Now the width of this crystal is 70 nanometers. Thickness of this crystal is 26 nanometers when they are mature but when they are small, newly formed, their thickness is only 1.5 nanometer. If we talk about the height of these crystals, it is 1000 nanometers or 1 micrometer. And if we talk about the length of these crystals, they are very long. They extend the entire thickness of enamel as you can see here. These crystals are arranged to form enamel rods, these red rods within which the crystals are arranged like this. So if I ask you what is the smallest unit of this enamel rod, with, 
so hydroxy appetite or the crystal is the smallest unit of the enamel rod and that is your important viva question now these crystals in enamel are huge they are 300 times those present in the dentine and that is your important entrance question now we look at the ions which is the strongest ion in the crystal it is the calcium ion which is present in the periphery which is the weakest ion in the crystal it is the hydroxy ion which is present in the center now these hydroxy ions and calcium ions in the center can be replaced by other ions which ions let's see magnesium can come at place of calcium carbonate can come at place of hydroxyl and when this happens this entire crystal gets destabilized because these magnesium and carbonate have poor fit these crystals these center of these crystals is very soluble in acids it's easily attacked so core of the crystal such crystals is soluble in acids as compared to the peripheral portions where stronger calcium ions are there so the concentration of these weaker ions as it, that is magnesium and carbonate it increases from surface towards the dentine that means these ions are high in concentration near the dentine that means these weaker areas can be easily preferentially attacked by caries and the concentration of fluoride which is actually a stronger ion it decreases from surface to dentine so again so the fluoride concentration is less here again making this area more vulnerable to acid attack so these areas of enamel near the dentine are easily attacked by acids so all these ions strontium magnesium lead and fluoride they if are present during the process of enamel formation they can go inside the crystals now dry weight percentage of three major ions that is oxygen is 43.4 calcium is 36.6 and phosphorus is 17.7 remaining minor constituents together make 2.3 percent of which sodium is 0.67 carbon is 0.64 and magnesium is 0.35 but for our the concentration of carbonate is very very important which is 3.2 percent because carbonate can replace the hydroxy ions and phosphate ions and can make these crystals very very weak and easily susceptible to acid attack so these are the crystals which are easily attacked by acid so where is the water water is present in the spaces in between the crystals also it is present in between the rods and also surrounding the rods now in between the crystals where they are near the boundaries of the rods as you can see here blue dots these areas are present which are called pores in which the water is present now if we compare it with other heart tissues organic component of enamel is mainly made up of enamel proteins which gets later replaced by mineral whereas in other heart tissues like dentine and bone the collagen is the principal structural protein that is the difference so the only heart tissue that lacks collagen where collagen is absent is enamel if we talk about the inorganic component of enamel and if we compare it with bone and dentine we can see it is maximum in enamel so highest mineral content is present in enamel followed by dentine followed by bone and least in cementum next difference is in the mineralization timing so if we look at the graph here the mineralization of enamel dentine and bone is represented by three different colors and if we plot it against time hours days weeks months years how the mineralization volume increases so we can see that red curve for enamel it starts at zero that means as soon as the enamel is formed its mineralization starts as soon as it is secreted but whereas the green and the purple curves that is for dentine and the bone they start after a lag that is they are not starting at zero so there is lag in mineralization after the matrix formation and this lag is more for dentine as compared to bone dentine purple and bone is green curve so that is the third difference and if we look at the primary mineralization and secondary mineralization of bone and enamel for enamel this goes in a smooth curve the red curve is smooth whereas the other two curves for bone and dentine that is purple and green curve first half of the mineralization occurs rapidly so the curve is going rapidly like this then it becomes flattened when the secondary mineralization occurs and then it continues to rise slowly so that is the difference in the mineralization curve of enamel bone and dentine so let's summarize chemical composition of enamel by weight in organic material is 96 percent organic and water is 4%. Organic material is mainly enamel proteins which are amelogenins and non-amelogenins. Inorganic component is calcium hydroxy appetite present in the form of crystals. Compared to other mineralized tissues, mineral 
enamel has highest mineral content and there is lack of collagen let's check what have you learned what is the com chemical composition of enamel what is the percentage of organic and inorganic component which is the major organic component that is in major enamel protein what is the inorganic component of enamel known as and what is its chemical formula what is the shape and the dimensions of hydroxyapatite crystals of enamel which mineralized tissue has the highest mineral content and which is the only hard tissue that lacks collagen so that is all for this video if you really like the video do tap on the like button and share the video with your friends keep learning keep watching and good luck for your exams see you in the next video till then take care bye bye